All right, guys, I want you to listen up. I want you to pay close attention. We are about, well, it's already going on right now. We are undergoing the largest wealth transfer ever. It is a massive wealth transfer during the global reset, the recession, and the new world order. And I'm gonna give you, as uh, one guy was watching, all stuff and no fluff on how you can participate in the greatest wealth transfer we've ever had in history. This video was brought to you by B-School for Hustlers. I am introducing a new course, and right now we're in the pre-launch phase for the next two weeks. It is the Intellectual Property School. Now, what is that? My first digital product, Making Money A to Z with self storage Union Auctions, a product that made $2.2 million, was a digital product, which was intellectual property. Um, I cannot express to you guys the massive power of intellectual property. Give you an example. When you go ahead and create your own products using intellectual property and do your own thing, you create what I like to call a micro monopoly. You, someone can come here and see a course that I have because all my courses are proprietary. They come from my unique experience, wisdom, and insights. So you can't go around the corner and get a Glendon Cameron course cheaper from somewhere else. You just can't do it. So what happened, and this is what's gonna happen with Intellectual Property School. I am going to teach you step-by-step step what I do. First, a disclaimer. This is not fast money. You're looking at six months to a year before you start making money with a YouTube channel, a podcast, writing a book, creating an online course. These are things that I'm currently doing so I have relevant information. I can teach you how to have a very small YouTube channel and make more money than you're making on your job. Disruptive Mail, the first Disruptive Mail um, YouTube channel only had like 7,000 subscribers. I was making $15,000 a month from that YouTube channel. So I can tell you and teach you how to set up a YouTube channel to make money. This is something I have been doing since 2009. So I have 13 years experience of using YouTube to make money and I can teach you how to do it. Now, if you are broke dick Danny and you're like, I need some money real quick, you need to go ahead and keep hustling player because once you enter the intellectual property realm, you position yourself to make more money than you would do investing in cryptocurrency. This is why I keep talking smack about cryptocurrency. 2020, I made $3 million. Three fucking million dollars. And you're talking about, I'm buying some Bitcoin, I'm buying some Arithium. Here's the problem with cryptocurrency, and this is the uh, beauty of having an intellectual property business. Cryptocurrency, you have to put money in the currency and hope the currency appreciates. With intellectual property, you are the factory. This is one of the things that used to just piss me off when I was in the storage auction business. I would get a good unit, some good products, and just sell out immediately. Whenever I have a good product in the intellectual property factory, I will never sell out. There's no scarcity because I am the factory and I can manufacture as many copies as, many, as, as I need. There, all of my websites are built like, let's say I got on television and then a million people hit my websites and I had massive sales. My websites are already built for that event. They're already built for that. And I cannot tell you, because like I said, you know, with the crypto conversation, I've had, you know, some, this crypto clown coming in here talking all this stuff and she living in a small ass house 
driving a regular ass car, but she all on that cryptocurrency. You wanna know why? Cause she can't do better. What I can teach you will literally change your life. Now, let's go ahead and put this out here. You're not gonna make the kind of money I make. Now, why is that? Cause I'm teaching you how to do it. But see, you've got something called a learning curve. I came to YouTube in 2009 with a solid set of business skills, which allowed me to make $62,000 my first year, $92,000 my third, my second year, and 1.5 million my third year. So I came to the platform with knowing what I had to do to make money and you have to learn how to create intellectual property and then create marketing and then create sales and create funnels and create offers. And that's gonna take time. So once again, I am not going to blow smoke up your booty and say that you're gonna make the kind of money I'm making. I'm not gonna, it ain't, it ain't happening. But within six, to, six months to a year, you can be making five to 15,000, which for a lot of people is life changing money. Right now I'm doing the pre-launch, the links below, you get 65% off while you're waiting on me to start producing the training will teach you everything that I know. All right, so with the great wealth transfer, I am watching YouTube channels and people's like, what to do through a recession? Okay, we've had this conversation over and over again. If you're not ready right now, there ain't nothing you can do for the recession. There's no investment strategy that you can do. And uh, shout out to the real estate trapper. He was like, buying on the dip when it's getting dippier. A lot of people buying on the dip and it goes down more. So you can buy on the dip if you want to. Uh, I would advise you to wait about a year and let this market sort itself out. Then once again, you could be missing some cheap stuff because the stock market moves erratically. You know, like it'll go down and then boom, some events that happen and it'll pop back up. But here's the gist of how you, yes, you, can take advantage of the great wealth transfer. You gotta own some stuff. All right, if you are an average person working a regular job, you're not in a position to take advantage of the wealth transfer. You've gotta own stocks, you've gotta own real estate. Right now, in the garage, I have over $200,000 worth of cars. It's a depreciating asset, but let's say I needed $200,000. I can sell that Porsche pretty much in a day because there's not a lot of 911s out there. If I wanted to raise $125,000 real quick, I could sell that Porsche. The BMW would be a solar sale, but I could probably get it sold within a month. So within a month, I can raise 200K quite easily. So that's the position you have to be in. And right now we're in this situation like with the great wealth transfer and the new world order. Let's talk about that. I'm seeing these videos talking about you will own nothing, but you will be happy. Let me tell you why you want to be part of the ownership class. The ownership class, people who own town houses, and these people who go to the community meetings and go to the city hall and the municipal meetings, they control what happens in their city because they're owners. As a property owner and they band together and they create an agenda, they shape policy because they are owners. As a renter, I was renting the house one time and there was a HOA association and stuff. I couldn't attend the meetings because I was just merely a renter. But if I was an owner, I could have went in there and impacted policy. So what you got to do, and for many of you, it's going to be very, very hard because a lot of you don't have any money. But what you got to do is posi position yourself to be an owner of something valuable, whether it be stock, real estate, vehicles, diamonds, I'm going to tell you something because if you're not, you know, I used to be very much a watch guy and this is something that I wish I had did. Last year, Rolex Daytonas 
It's a specific type of Rolex. We're going for about 30,000. This year, they're going for 50. Because I was thinking about buying myself a gold Rolex Daytona. And I saw one, almost pulled the trigger. It was like $33,000. I could have bought that watch last year and flipped it at almost 100% profit. So watches, believe it or not, there's a guy on here that has uh, something that's called Watch Trading Academy. As someone with insights on watches, I know a lot of the stuff he says is true. Um, watches are appreciated because this is one of the things that Rolex, uh, Crazy 8, they make these unique watches, then they stop making them. So if you want that particular watch, if you want that particular movement, you gotta buy that watch in the secondary market and some of these watches are exploding with crazy prices because you cannot get them from the factory because they'll they'll like, this is really good. And I know why they do it because I will tell you, there's a t-shirt brand called Bathing Ape. And what they do is they create a product run and they, it's very limited. And once the new products are sold out, you can only get these t-shirts on the secondary market. And these t-shirts are going for two to three times what they paid for them new on the secondary market because they have created scarcity. And this is the same thing that these watch manufacturers do. Uh, same thing that Ferrari does and Porsche does. Porsche, Ferrari, they have unique specced out cars that they only make a handful and they literally charge a million dollars for these cars because they've created scarcity because if you want this certain Ferrari or you want this certain kind of McLaren, you got to pony up one to three million dollars and they are only going to be like four five hundred in the world but once again think about that you got a three million dollar car and you're you, you're making 500 for every hundred cars you sell you've made 300 million 300 million so this one model they will make billions of dollars off this one model because it's creating scarcity. And one of the things you have to do is let go of this notion that you're gonna get rich real quick. All right, let's talk about that. Um, right now, there's someone who, because on my other channel, Glendon Camera School, I put up a video, it is a false narrative that most entrepreneurs are young. The average age of most rich people are young. The average age of a millionaire in the United States is 62. And you do have some, and she was like, you know, she gave me this example of bad Barbie, disproved everything I said. And I was like, really? If you know who bad Barbie is, she was on the Dr. Phil show many years ago talking about catch me outside, right? Her going on Dr. Phil gave her nationwide name brand recognition. The same thing that put Trump in office international name everyone knows who donald trump is and everyone knew who this girl was her name is danielle she's italian so what she started doing is building a rap career she was appearing in rap videos she started rapping she did an instagram account she was on dr phil either 2015 or 2016 she was 13 years old and she built an instagram following of like 16 million people and then she went ahead and created an OnlyFans. I did not, I, I didn't buy the OnlyFans because you know, that's not my, my thing. But she made $52 million off her OnlyFans. And this person wanted to argue with me that, you know, you that she felt that she could do something similar without the background of a bad Barbie. Like once again, if like if I got on, look, let's, let's just say this, let's just say this. Remember what happened in October with me and the R. Kelly video, right? Let's say I went on a Dr. Phil show. I went on an Oprah, because I don't think Oprah's doing shows anymore. But let's say I got on that show and within a day, most of America, even people who didn't watch the show, would know who I was. And they would come to the internet and they would find my courses I would have made millions if that had happened. I would have made millions because there have been people who would have joined the hating ass bitches crowd and there were the people who have joined the supporting crowd and there were people who was like, what, what does this guy has to offer? 
well, let me put my credit card in, right? So if I were to get onto CNN or something where I can get my name out into the public sphere, that would be a great benefit to me. Because right now, uh, essentially, um, not a lot of people know who I am. You know, I got a following here on YouTube, but not a lot of people know who I am. So if I was to do something to get onto one of these shows, that would elevate my status and elevate my revenue. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand, you're not going to get rich quick because here's the thing. This is one of my things I like to say. You don't know what you don't know. And in that space is the problem. Because in 2009, when I came on YouTube, because I had been in the storage auction business for so long, I knew that I had to consistently market my book. I intuitively knew that. And that's what I did. I sold that book for about five, almost six years. Because I consistently marketed that book where the average person writes a book, then puts it on Amazon and that's it. That's all they do. And they wonder like, I'm not getting any sales. Or you can write a certain kind of book in a popular category. And then if it gets picked up by the album rhythm, it could make sales. But here's the, the, the thing is you have got to own something. You've got to become part of the ownership class. Because if you're just out here, like, oh, you know, I, I, every day I look at my DoorDash people and, you know, I would say, because I order DoorDash quite a bit, I would say out of like 100 DoorDash delivery people, maybe 10 were dressed appropriately because maybe they had another type of job they knew how to dress. Because this, this is one of the things that's killing people is people do not know how to position or present themselves in the proper arena. I'm getting ready to hire an assistant and I already know what's going to happen. I'm going to have some people who are just not going to know how to interview. I'm going to have people who are going to say, hey, I'm coming to the interview and they're not going to show up. So I'm just bracing myself for that because that's what's going to happen because I'm going in it with my eyes wide open. And this is the thing with this wealth transfer, you need to go in with your wide eyes wide open. And once again, you need to accumulate some money. You need to have your long-term emergency fund and your short-term emergency fund in your family operating account. And I would recommend that you have 12 months of living expenses in your long-term emergency fund. And then I would recommend that you have $5,000 in your short-term emergency fund. Then I would recommend that you have two months of living expenses in your family operating account so you can pay your bills. Like I just got my power bill yesterday. It's not due to the 30th. Guess when I paid my power bill? I paid it yesterday. I pay my bills when I get them. I don't wait. I don't even look at when they're due. It's like, oh, here's a bill. Just pay it. And you want to be in that position because here's the thing. Once you have that long term emergency fund, the short term emergency fund and that family operating account, your stress level goes from here to here. Like once again, I don't really stress about nothing other than that car rental business, that car rental business is the most stress I've had in 17 years, 18 years. The storage auction business was hard, but it wasn't stressful. It really wasn't stressful. So once you go ahead and get this money situated, your stress level just drops. It disappears. Your stress level goes to nothing. Okay. And one of the things is in the effort to make this channel relevant and make this channel helpful, I tell you the truth. I don't do stuff to get views which incidentally seems to be working out because last month and I'm not going to mention any names, but there's two little bitches on YouTube whose channels are degrading because I went to Social Blade just out of curiosity the other day and I saw that literally I had more views last month than both these bitches combined. And part of the reason and this 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 is very, 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 very important. Stop focusing on bullshit. Stop focusing on it. Like whenever someone leaves one of these jacked up comments, I go to their YouTube channel to block them. I always see that they're consuming bullshit. Hit world star or some other non-profitable endeavor. 
you have got to let that go if you want to participate in this wealth transfer and we're talking trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars let me go ahead and give you the playbook what's going to happen to me right now i'm getting back to developing my online course business and one of the things is as a seasoned business owner i know my first at bat is it really going to, you know, this is something I know and I'm going to explain to you. I have the intellectual property school is going to do better than the Glendon Cameron uh, Rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu. Because this is what people are looking for. They're looking for a blueprint. So I can create a course like the intellectual property school is probably going to make $3 million because it is something that I'm currently doing. And I know all of the ins and outs. I know how to write a book. I know how to create a podcast. I know how to create YouTube channels. I know how to create online courses. This is something that I'm currently doing. And I've seen this with Alex over at Good Energy and his trucking course. He's made like 18 million off that course because he's teaching something that he's currently doing. And that's what people are looking for because the way that, you know, I'm going to do uh, the Intellectual Property School and the Rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu concurrently. And as I build this out, because this, this is one of the beautiful things about intellectual property. As like you build it out, and let me go ahead and talk about how you create an offer. First thing that I do is I send out test. And I sent out a test last night. And I got um, like 10 sales. And I was like, oh, oh. So I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta keep hammering that copy. I got 10 sales last night. I, I'll, I'll tell you, I made $10,000 last night, right? So once I, once I go ahead and start building out the offer, cause what's gonna happen is the offer, I'm gonna add more stuff to the offer. This is how you build out an offer. And this is how you make your offers irresistible. Cause as I build it out and as I get stuff going on, because like I said, the intellectual property school, this is something that I currently do. And I'm gonna teach you everything that I do, how to do it. And I feel what's gonna be really, really good is teaching someone how to make money with a small YouTube channel. The chances of you blowing up and getting 3 million subscribers is slim to none. I mean, it's real, it's, I don't ever, you know, I don't see unless I ever got into um, gossip or sports or something like that. or. I don't know, I can't really say, but this channel has 137,000 subscribers, right? This channel collectively since 2009 has made me about 15 million. I make way more money than YouTubers. The only YouTubers making more money than me are Graham Stephan and me Kevin because me Kevin has, because they both have online courses. That's where they make a lot of money. And they're, they're the only ones who are making more than me because they get way more traffic. If my traffic doubled overnight, I would be at two hundred dollars to $400,000 a month consistently. Mm -hmm. Consistently. So I'm gonna teach you about that because here's the thing, I don't use paid ads. And then one of the dumb asses was like, just run ads. Okay, here's the thing with running ads. First, you wanna sell organically to figure out what offer resonates. And once you figure out what offer resonates, then you can run ads. There's a lot of work you have to do before you can just run ads. I mean, just a complete dumbass that said that, just run ads. Because if you're just running ads and you don't know who your avatar is, you don't have a, a desired customer base, um, you can blow through a lot of money and make no money, no money. And I have run ads before, and in the future, I will run ads again. But once again, I'm going to teach you step by step how to do this. And I'm going to teach you what type of YouTube channel should you start. Because this is the thing. And listen to me. Please listen to me. You have this ideal of starting some bullshit YouTube channel that ain't going to make no money. It ain't going to work. It's like, I want to start a YouTube channel talking about puppies. Will that make me money? No, it ain't. You have to put it in a niche that can make money. Because this is one of the reasons I like, I would say this YouTube channel collectively between, we're about at 20 million. 20 million since 2009. 
And the average small business doesn't make that kind of money. And this is what's funny. And this, this, this is wild. The longer I do this and the better I get, I can see a $10 million year. I can see a $20 million year. So collectively, let's say I've did 20 million from 2009 up to now. As I go forward, I'm gonna have a year where I'm gonna do 10 to $20 million. I know this, and it's gonna happen before I'm 60. That's how powerful intellectual property is. And this is something no one's talking about because they, you know, uh, some people are talking about it because so there, there's, there's specific YouTube channels geared for it, but they don't get a lot of views because one of the thing is, you gotta work. Writing a book, like I haven't started writing my book, The Art of Profit, because I got my computer, because right now I'm just doing a lot of setup stuff. And I got everything from my podcast. I got the intros, I got the outros, I got the cover art. Uh, three episodes are done. And let me go ahead and tell you, once again, with Intellectual Property School, like a lot of people will start a podcast and they'll release the first episode. You don't wanna do that. Uh, I'm probably gonna release um, five to 10 episodes. I already got three. So once you go there, you can listen and listen and listen and listen, right? And once again, I have them because I already have people It's like, hey, where do I find them? And it's not ready. But once I get ready to launch and I have those five or 10 episodes up there ready to go, then I will let you know where they are and then you can go because um, the Art of Profit podcast is very different than the YouTube channels. Number one, I don't cuss on the podcast. So it's gonna be different content. It's a different presentation. I have a, a mic that I've had for years and the mic has a very deep and rich sound. I really love this mic. Um, so it's very different. And this is one of the things. You want to create online courses. You wanna write books. You wanna create podcasts. You wanna create YouTube channels. Now, there's a bunch of weak-minded, jealous-ass little bitches who's like, oh, you, you sell courses, you sell... Like, once again, I don't sell any courses on how to get rich. I expressly said that you start a business, you're looking at a three to five, a three to 10 year journey. And it's like, oh, because once again, these people are dumb. These people are mental midgets because they will form an opinion without doing any analysis or research. And this is something I'm gonna teach you because believe it or not, you can have a very small YouTube channel. Uh, I'm gonna share some of the, my frustrations with Disruptive Mail. The content is solid, but most men today are lazy. Just keep it a buck. And the other day, I was listening to a YouTube channel, and this is something I've been saying for years. I've been saying for years because it's been my experience. I have been able to date drop dead gorgeous women because I simply approached them, right? And I've just did it because I was like, if she says no, she says no. I, in my mind, before I approach her, I feel like I got a 50% chance. And I've been telling dudes, get off, get off these online dating apps and like in public, if you see a really attractive woman, walk up to her, introduce yourself, and spit your game. I've been saying that for years. Well, I was listening to this YouTube video, and it was a data scientist, and they did the research because they did the research, hard clinical analysis. And this guy was blown away because he says, what happens when a one messages a 10 online? And he's like, you know, they, they have no chance, right? And he said, wrong. When a one messages a, a, a 10 online, it's a 14% chance. So if we were to transfer that to real life, that chance goes up to 30%. So if you were to approach women, hot women, and spit your game, even if you look like Quasimoto, the hunchback of Notre Dame, you would do better. And I've been saying this, and most men just want to get in the echo chamber and whine about the behavior of women versus actually doing something to change their damn fucking life. And you know, I'm just sitting there like, all right, because the guys just, they don't want that strong cocaine. 
They want bullshit. Like I've done an analysis on the men's channels that blow up and they all mock make women. There's the poor man's podcast talking about the delusion of women. That, that's 100% their content and their channels are doing really, really well because the average man is mentally fucking weak. Just weak. Like, believe it or not, if you put it in your mind, you could be dating a beautiful woman. But you got to actually get off your ass and approach her and talk to her. And this is one of the things. Women are shocked when dudes approach them in public. They're shocked because there's so many weak, moist little men. And one of the things I'm probably getting ready to do because I make way more money with the business stuff than I do with the men's stuff. Like I had that small YouTube channel and it was 7,000 subscribers doing about 15,000. So I haven't really fully decided, but most of my energy is going to go to intellectual property school and the rebirth of hustlers kung fu because i will make more money in a week than i'll make in three or four months with the men's stuff because men just don't want to do the work just don't want to do the work and i was looking at some stuff that kevin samuel said and i 100 percent agree with kevin on this point because he was talking about tommy lauren and how she got checked by the white men and how she was had talking points that black women had been talking but because white men have power Tommy got checked and he was talking about some of her valid points so I agree with that but once again dudes if you want to be fucking bad bitches it can be a reality if you would stop being a weak little bitch remember this one rule a bitch can't get a bitch unless she's a lesbian.